In this video we're going to be taking a very quick look at this piece of equipment. If you don't recognise it in its current form, it is a Philips PM6673. It's a universal frequency counter. There were several models in this uh, range that went from 10 Hz up to 1.5 GHz. As you can see this particular one goes up to 120 MHz. And this was advertised on eBay as not working. So I bought it for two reasons. The first is I was going to make a repair video of it. Now, it's the sort of uh, vintage equipment that you might find interesting. Very nicely made. And for the time, this was sort of late 70s, early 80s, uh, it was very accurate. And having tested it, I found that it works. So I can't find any faults with it. There were a couple of uh, dirty contacts on some of the buttons that made it do strange things now and again, but uh, I can't believe that's what the fault was. So I can't find any faults. Maybe it was something loose that uh, got shook back into place during transit, but I've stripped it right down. I've had a very good look through it and I can't find anything wrong with it. So I decided not to make this video. But then I decided that, well, maybe some people might be interested in seeing inside this. Before I go into that, the second reason I bought this uh, was because I've got some fairly major projects coming up uh, for some uh, very historic pieces of equipment and I'll be making some videos on those shortly there'll be fairly le lengthy video series and some fairly major bits of equipment but I know that to uh, test them properly or at least certain parts of them I need a very accurate frequency standard I do have other counter timers that are quite accurate and have uh, ovened uh, crystal controls in them. But when I saw this advertised, while it didn't say it had an oven controlled option fitted, looking at the serial number and the model number, I did a check and found that this has a fairly interesting oven uh, controller in it. And this is, as I say, I used to use these um, uh, a long time ago for calibrating some fairly high end equipment. So I'm quite familiar with the uh, range of options and accessories for them. And that's the second reason I bought it. This particular unit has got a very precise oven controlled oscillator in it. So that's uh, this unit back here. I'll go through this in a few minutes. It's, it's relatively simple, but it uh, might be of some interest to some people to have a quick look around it. Uh, but this is the main reason I bought this unit. While it's quite a useful counter in its own right, I can of course use it as a, um, a standard for my lab for frequency. It's a 10 MHz uh, crystal of course, and if we look at the specification for it, the particular oscillator fitted to this unit is the one that I was hoping it would be, which is the PM9691. And if you look at the spec for these, you'll see that for a 24 hour period, they're better than um, 5 times 10 to the minus 10 parts per million. And even over a one year a period, it's better than 7.5 times 10 to the minus 8. In terms of temperature stability, uh, over a 0 to 50 degree range, it's better than 5 times 10 to the minus 9. And changing um, measuring modes, so going from external to battery for example, it's better than 3 times 10 to the minus 9. Line voltage regulation is better than 5 times 10 to the minus 10. It does take 15 minutes to warm up, but this is an extremely accurate time base. So I needed this, as I say, because I wanted a very accurate uh, time base for some of my equipment that I'll be using for the upcoming projects. Uh, and also, as I say, it's quite a nice um, counter timer in its own right. We'll have a quick look at this in a minute. Um, I've spent a lot of time so far cleaning this up. It was in a bit of a state. And one piece of advice I want to offer, if you do come across any of this vintage of Philips equipment, it's essentially this brown uh, colour, and quite often it has the uh, blue bar on it on the front panel, kind of a chocolate brown colour, but they have a very nice finish, or I think it's a really nice finish. They, I think Philips called it a suede paint finish. It's quite a nice fine texture. Quite a lot of colour. But unfortunately, when they made this, they tried to make it a self-healing coating. 
So it's kind of a paint with a denatured um, covering on top. And the idea was that uh, you'd use something like water or ethanol and that would uh, cause the denatured covering to reform and it would kind of refresh the covering and keep it like new. The problem is that denatured coating is extremely susceptible to damage from things like methylated spirits and in particular um, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, and unfortunately, as you probably know, IPA these days is everyone's go-to solvent for cleaning things. And what tends to happen is, as you can see on the outside, uh, it just completely destroys the finish. And you can normally tell if it's been done because the surface will remain sticky. So it's got a real sticky uh, feel to it. Uh, there's no real way to recover it. Uh, what I'll be doing with this unit is completely stripping it and, and repainting it. I'll try and find some paint that's a similar colour. Incidentally, if anyone knows what the actual colour is, the Pantone colour for this, uh, then I'd be very grateful if you can let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll need to refinish it. As I say, it's just a sticky mess and it will just attract all sorts of dirt. And there is no way now to, to recover this. So if you do have a piece of equipment like this, if it looks like this, only use water to clean it. If you use IPA, you will absolutely ruin the finish. Okay, so that's just a word of caution if you do have one of these because it really does uh, spoil their appearance. Front panel's fine, it's just this uh, suede finish is very susceptible. Okay, we'll have a very quick look around it uh, and then I'll uh, reassemble it and power it up so you can see uh, what it does. Um, very simple in operation. So to start with, of course, we have the uh, oscillator oven controlled, uh, very precise and I have run this and although the last calibration uh, states it was uh, 1991 uh, this was still well within spec it was only about I think 3 Hertz out so it's absolutely uh, amazing that was at uh, 10 megahertz. So what we have in here is uh, the core of the system which is this uh, chip if anyone that's interested that's the uh, part number so it's uh, OQ0040 that's actually a custom LSI chip that was made specifically for this equipment. And most pieces of equipment like this, counter timers, the basic architecture is uh, two timers. One counting pulses from your time base and the other counting pulses coming in through the uh, input socket. And of course what it does is it effectively compares those two counts. So one count is used as a gate uh, to create the gating uh, time and then the other counter is the one that's accumulated the incoming counts and because they have to be fairly tightly synchronized and controlled uh, what Philips did is roll their own um, dual counter chip and this has on board all the synchronization um, the two counters required for this entire system to work. The rest of it is all really control uh, and ancillary uh, circuits so you have uh, the incoming um, high sensitivity, high gain, high frequency, wide bandwidth circuit required for a piece of equipment like this. Uh, also, if you have something that runs down from 10 hertz up to 1.5 gigahertz, then it needs quite a, a wide bandwidth, and the sensitivity goes down to 10 millivolts. Uh, so, uh, of course, it needs to be quite a, um, uh, a sensitive uh, input circuit. Uh, we then have the microprocessor that's running this unit. So again, if you're interested, that is um, an Intel uh, 8049. Uh, fairly simple microcontroller. So it's a microcontroller, not a microprocessor. And this is, if you like, the forerunner to things like PICs and the like. And um, it's um, quite a capable device for its time. The date on this is 77. Um, but looking at the rest of the devices, I think this was built in 79. Uh, but um, as I say, quite a, a capable processor. The rest of the bits and pieces are really to adjust the uh, supply voltages. It's got a very nice power supply. Uh, this does have a battery back option, so there is a switch over circuit to switch between battery and main supply. And that's pretty much it as far as this top. Uh, layer is concerned. 
If we flip it over, then there's a second board on the bottom. I'll just pop that out. I've already taken most of the screws out, so there's just one left in there. And then you can see this is really the remainder of the system. So we've got the system ROM. Um, we've then got the in-out control devices. Obviously we've got the usual GPIP uh, interface and the configuration for that. And that's what the rest of this is really for. There's nothing else in there. As I say, it's all uh, quite straightforward. There are no other boards in here. And um, that's pretty much it. It's, as I say, simple device. Most of the functionality is built around that single device and then all the control and display is um, controlled through the uh, microcontroller. Okay, so very quick teardown. I won't go into this in any more detail. It's, as I say, quite a, a simple device. Unfortunately, I can't show the repair video. I can't uh, find any faults. Uh, if I do find something wrong with it, I'll make another video and uh, show what the fault was and how I fixed it. Um, but what I'll do now is reassemble this and I'll just show it running. Okay, it's reassembled. I've got it hooked up to a signal generator. It's not a particularly accurate generator, but uh, you can see it's not too bad. But I do have a piece of equipment in the lab that um, has been calibrated fairly recently, so I know it's quite accurate. And I have the frequency output of this connected to it, so we'll just have a quick look at that. Just have to move the camera. And as you can see, it's just a small fraction of a hertz out. So that's my PM6680, that's been calibrated fairly recently. And you can see that um, it's almost dead on, it's just a very small fraction out. And um, this Philips has not been calibrated for the best part of 30 years, so that's extremely good. Uh, it's other than the frequency standard it is quite a useful uh, piece of equipment in its own right if you don't have something like this I strongly advise getting it um, these are quite uh, cheap I think I paid 65 pounds for this delivered it's got a, a few fairly basic functions but it does have a very high accuracy and uh, very low drift so it's exactly what I need for the upcoming projects uh, but as I say, I bought this because I suspected it had a very good frequency standard fitted, and indeed it does, so it was well worth the money.